Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the Wien displacement law from the Planck distribution. Recall that we can write the Wien displacement law in the following form. Lambda max times the temperature is equal to a constant, where lambda max is the wavelength at which the greatest amount of energy is produced by a black body radiator. To see a video solving a problem with the Wien displacement law, please see this link here. For the Planck distribution, we have the differential of the energy is equal to this S times d lambda, where S has this complicated form of 8 pi hc over lambda to the fifth times this 1 over the quantity e to the hc divided by lambda kt minus 1. To solve for this lambda max in the Wien displacement law, we are going to take the derivative of this expression s with respect to lambda and set it equal to 0, which is our condition for a maximum or minimum. We notice that we have this factor of 8 pi hc, which does not involve lambda, so we can pull it out to the front. Then we realize that we have a 1 over lambda to the fifth, and this complicated function here, each of these involves lambda. So therefore, we have to apply the product rule for differentiation. So starting that here is the first function is this 1 over lambda to the fifth, and now we're going to multiply that by the derivative of this expression here. For the derivative of this expression, we can use the quotient rule for derivatives. So we have the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So the bottom times the derivative of the top, derivative of the top is going to be 0, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, well, the minus kind comes here. The derivative of the bottom is going to be this E expression times, because lambda is to the minus 1 power here effectively, we get minus hc over lambda squared kt, and then remember we have to square the denominator which gives us this expression squared. So this gives us the first part of the product rule, the first function times the derivative of the second. Just notice this is all the derivative of this particular expression here. Continuing the product rule, now we have plus the second times the derivative of the first, so the second is this 1 over EHC, and then the derivative of the first is, this is equivalent to lambda to the minus 5 power, so its derivative is going to be minus 5 x to the minus 6 power, or minus 5 divided by lambda to the 6. So this whole expression that we have here is the derivative of s with respect to lambda, and recall that we're setting it equal to 0, because we're looking for the relative maximum of lambda. Then we can simplify somewhat by dividing each side by 8 pi hc. Since that's not equal to 0, that's going to drop out. We can combine the minus signs here and these various terms. So we get hc over lambda to the 7th kt times this expression, recalling that we have a square in the denominator. And then for the second term, we can simply multiply minus 5 times 1, bring the lambda 6s in front here, and we can tidy up a little bit and recall that it's still equal to 0 because we're setting a derivative equal to 0 to find a relative maximum. While this expression is very complicated, we can simplify quite a bit. The first thing is to multiply it by e to the hc divided by lambda kt to the minus 1 to the first power. That's going to eliminate the, this part of the denominator over here, and it's going to eliminate one of these two powers to give us just to the first power now, and then there's no e to the hc on the right-hand side. And then also we can multiply each side by lambda to the seventh power. That's going to cancel out the lambda to the seventh uh, over here, and it's going to cancel six here and get one left over. Also, we're going to add a plus five lambda to the right-hand side. So now we get that hc over kt times this expression, which is still somewhat complicated, is equal to five times lambda. This expression 
with the exponentials is still quite complicated. So let's see if there's a technique that we can use to simplify that expression. We recognize that this expression down here is similar to this expression we have up here because we have an exponential and then an exponential minus one the denominator. So here we have a general e to the x divided by e to the x minus one. And we're gonna realize that if we divide the numerator and denominator each by e to the x, we can simplify. In the numerator, e to the x divided by e to the x is one. In the denominator, e to the x minus one divided by e to the x gives us one minus e to the minus x. So we've reduced it from having two uh, exponentials to an expression that has only one exponential. And we're going to now apply this idea to this expression in our derivative. Applying this identity here, we get hc over kt times one over one minus e, and now we have a minus in the exponential, which is gonna be extremely important here. Minus hc over lambda kt is equal to five times lambda. Now we're going to assume that we're interested in the region of short wavelengths, so that the wavelength is gonna be much less than this quantity hc divided by kt. Why is this important? If this is true, then this exponential here becomes very, very large, negative, e to the negative infinity is going to approach zero. So that's going to make the entire term that we have here equal to one. With this going to one gives us that hc over kt is equal to five times lambda. And now we're going to just simply arrange this to get a version of the Wien displacement law. This lambda is the lambda that, that maximizes the function, so it's lambda max. Lambda max times t is equal to hc over 5 times k, which is the fact that lambda max times t is equal to constant is our general principle from Wien's displacement law. And even more specifically, we recognize now that the c2 constant in Wien's displacement law is simply hc divided by k. If you wondered where the uh, one-fifth factor in the Wien's displacement law came from, now we see exactly where it came from. I thank you very much for your attention, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.